Hi everyone. I'm Tracy. I'm Carol. And we are my Outlander Purgatory. We that was so fun. good. That was so good. It was so yes, like, well, coordinated. I think we've had some practice now. I know. Well, we've worked it out. We've worked out the kinks and now we're like ready to go. Um, I hope everyone's having a great week this week. Um, Carol, are you having a good week? Uh, I'm having an okay week. A little, yeah. little tired, you know, got no some allergy. stuff going on. We were just talking about how allergies are so sucking, like sucking, sucking, sucking. And the weather in New Jersey, where we are, is just like piss poor. Sorry. Sorry for my crash, crash language, but there you it's, go. It's awful. It's awful. It's just, and I hate to complain. We had somewhat of a mild winter, but oh, just, it's awful. But you know, it's what? May and it's like February weather. It hasn't broken 60 degrees like in days. Um, and it's been raining nonstop for like four days. My fingers are, have um, wrinkles on them. But you know what eases the pain somewhat? What? Alcohol! Carol, what are you drinking? I am drinking Talisker 10 from the Isle of Skye. Awesome. Up your kill. Awesome. Well, today we happen to be filming um, our recap on a very special day in America called Cinco de Mayo. So, <laughs> oh, you totally, totally kept that secret on purpose. How could I be drinking anything but a what I call Tracy Rita, which is um. It's delish, first of all, but it is a, like, no sugar, um, it's not no calorie, unfortunately, but, um, you know, if you, for those of you doing the low carb kind of thing, it's no sugar. Um, I found that recipe on the internet and it's really good. So I call it Tracy Rita's. It uses some stevia and it uses orange extract instead of that, like, really sweet triple sex stuff. And it is delish. So slange and, uh, ay, 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 ay. What's the va? I don't know, but that's how you say it. It's the E in slanty. Okay, how come I always hear people say slanja, but then I hear on Outlander one day, I was like, did they just say it? Except for it sounded like slanta, slanta. I don't know. I still like slanty. And I'm like, I'm like, where did Tracy get her va from? Slanja, slanja va. I don't know. I don't know, because we're going to get like a million things about pronunciations and I don't want to hear it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, what? You mean like Murta? Oh, All right. Let me I don't just know. say something, guys. Here's the deal. The reason we say Murta is because that's sort of how Americans would pronounce it, even though a name is pronounced a different way. We're still speaking English, so it's not so much the wrong pronunciation of like a name that would be like in Spanish or French or something like that. It's still in, in, we're speaking English just like they are. It's just like different. Now, here's the real reason. We're speaking New Jersey English. Yeah. So, it's, like, you know, would, like dog. We like, would sound, well, Tracy, I noticed you say all. all. We, we were not, we did not, we did not grow up saying that. But honestly, I would sound silly sometimes if I said something like Merton. Or, you know what I mean? I, it's not how I talk. That's why I don't say talk. it. Talk. <laughs> it's not how I talk. <clears throat> I'm going to be coughing all night because of the said allergies that we talked about before. Um, so, anywho, um, we've covered the drinks. Um, we've covered everything that's going on. So, let's get to business. Let's get down to business. Um, and start in on episode 205 called Untimely resurrection um we have a new writer on this episode i don't believe that the writer richard Cahan has ever written an outlander episode before so we're breaking in some new blood with this episode and uh the director is last week's director douglas mckinnon so any general thoughts before we break things down <laughs> Do you have an idea in general of like where this falls on the season two scale so far? Mm. 
was really strange. Like in some ways it was mind blowing <laughs> and in other ways I was like. Um, yeah, I would say that that's pretty accurate. I mean, I'm going to say, I mean, if it's not the best episode so far and it might not be, it's up there. Um, and, and for the, and the things that were great about, were good about it were mind blowingly awesome. But then there were a couple other things that were like, just kind of, um, you know what? I'm kind of resigned to them right now. And this is reminding me that I should say that, um, again, once again, this past week, um, the, the comments and the feedback for, um, our episode, episode four video were phenomenal. I think we probably had the most comments like so far from any video this week. They're still coming in There's, fast and furious. Yes. Yes. Everywhere. Um, YouTube, on the blog, on Facebook, um, on Twitter. It's amazing. Like the conversations are so awesome. Again, we read them every week. We probably should like try to answer a couple questions or something in these videos, but they're already so long. And thank you for those of you who say we don't care. Keep them off. Because this one's going to be. Um, <laughs> we have a few surprises in this one too. Uh, I'm really hoping it's not. Um, well, we'll, we'll try, we'll see what we have, to, we'll see what we, um, um, let's get to it. We'll let me we... Okay. So the Easter egg was, um, basically, uh, looks like a horse being prepared, being like blanketed with the, with the, um, horse blanket with the fleur de lis on it that like symbolizes France. Mm -hmm. Was there any significance to that? Like other than, you know, that's one of the horses that like Jamie and Sandringham are going to look at later. Is it like is horse's ass? I mean, I, I guess, but they really they focused on the blanket more what than anything. Thing? Oh, I thought you were serious. What did you like? Because normally the Easter eggs have some some significance. I mean, the past couple ones have been like a little bit hitting you over the head with them. Right. So I'm like, oh my god, am I missing it? I was like googling the shit out of Florida Lee. Florida Lee, Dragonfly and Amber, like, what's the, you know, is there something in the book I'm missing? And, I don't know, other than, like, to the king's horse. Don't know. I don't know, but let's, let's, let's go to the beginning and go All from right. there. So, them, the, the servants are running around cleaning up the house after the, uh, cyclone yep. went through it. And, and narration starts and goes on and on. And on. And on. And on. And, and the first thing I have written down is that the Claire I know would be helping them clean up and making some snide remark about her hands being just as capable as theirs. No, 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 no. That was Claire from episode one. Don't you remember? Claire from episode two wised up and lets the servants do everything. Hanky. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, Claire's on board with the servants now. And um, I did love how when Jamie came in and he's like, were you, you were up all night and she's like, not the only one. And she's talking about Fergus and I'm like, hello, I think Jamie was up all night too. I just, that whole, that whole little bit is just so adorable. Like, first of all, whatever shot that they showed of Jamie and then whatever shot they showed of Fergus, they really look alike. Oh like, my God. Did you God. notice that? They had like the I, same moppy hair. Yeah, um, I, I didn't notice aesthetically as far as their looks, but I just, I had something down about Fergus and Jamie might be my, like, the best part of the season. Um, like, honest to God, when he picks him up, when Jamie picks Fergus up, and it's just, oh. Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loves in a row. Like, love, 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 Jamie carrying Fergus. Yeah, um, I have Fergus and Jamie are the best part of the season. Um. Yeah, and I just said, I thought Fergus was like a mini Jamie. He was, was adorable. That whole part, that whole part was just really cute. Um, yeah, it was just great. So he carries Fergus off to bed. Um, and then they're in the bed chamber. And then the exposition starts because we don't know anything that's happened at all. Right. So it's basically the two of them, like, just like breaking down what happened. Almost like you and me are doing right now. You know, okay, well, like, we all got that best deal except Alex because he's gotten worse because, Cl you know, Clive or whoever is, like, saying that he raped Mary and so he's stuck in the best deal and he needs a letter from bad, 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 bad. 
And what I started thinking, like, is, you know, this whole issue we're having with Jamie and Claire and, like, the, the, the just, yeah, yeah. Like, is part of the problem that they are so often used as the expo- exposition device that there's, like, no time left to just have, like, some cute moment or some, like, little bonding moment because they're too busy having, like, pack in like everything that's happened in the last two hours since probably probably probably. i mean we all saw we all i hope you guys saw and if you did not go check it out on dinah gabaldon's facebook page how she posted the um god it went on and on and on it was it was the text from dragonfly and amber that last that that last week's big scene with jamie and claire was based on with the whole, like, come back from the whores with the bite mark. The who is? The who is. So, anyway. Hang on a minute. Not done yet. So, what you were just saying also is that part of the problem is that Claire's always miserable and does a lot of lecturing. I'm like, is she ever going to smile? Like, I just feel like she is just constantly, everything is a lecture and she's always annoyed and she's <laughs> always... Can I read you exactly what I have written down here? Hang on. I have Claire's always miserable. She's never funny. She's not laid back like Claire is. Claire's the most laid back person on the planet. Not witty. She's usually witty as hell. Always lecturing Jamie. It's getting annoying. Okay. Now go. Now read. I did make a comment in my notes about, like, you know, again, I feel, I feel like it's like, it's, like who? Okay, like the like the Sherlock Holmes with um with um who who's the with um Johnny what's his name and Lucy Liu, like I feel like there's some sort of crime solving team, you know, and it's not even heart to heart, like because at least they're you know sort of romantic. That's like it's like Sherlock Holmes and and Watson, you know. What I wrote down was like Jamie interrogates Claire about like Saint Germain, like he's you know effing Columbo. <laughs> And Claire, she asked one more question. Uh, before you go, just one more thing. Did Don't you make me laugh. It letters? hurts today. It hurts to laugh today. Don't make me laugh. Um, Can't you know, do it today. But then what I wrote after that was, why does Claire have to be so angry about everything? When, um... Jamie says, like, oh, yeah, I may have, uh, like, started that whole Adam Blanche thing because, you know, I like, they're throwing hoovers at me and I, like, you know, needed, needed a quick out. And it's kind of, instead of seeing, like, the irony of it or seeing, like, you know, really, like, like being like, really? You, you know what? It's, it becomes, because I wrote it down, calling a wife a witch was the best idea. Was, calling a wife a witch was the best idea. Was the best idea? After everything that happened at Crane Viewer, you know, she's like all indignant. And I have. Now she's bitching at Jamie for using La Dame Blanche in order to avoid sleeping with her. <laughs> like, which, which, which Jamie do you want? The one who makes up names about you. Yes, we all remember your past at Crane Viewer. The Jamie who makes up names or the Jamie who hooks up. <laughs> Going with making up names. <laughs> no, I totally agree. And I mean, she does, like, at the very end of that scene, she's like, oh. mm. But really, and I, you know, I don't want to be like. It's not enough. The book says. But, it, again, that was another one of these. I think that was probably. I forget if that was in that whole part that Diana posted t- yesterday. Um, from that whole bite mark scene as well. But it really was kind of like. I mean, I don't think she was happy about it, but it was, it was more like, really? Like, like she, like, she was like, Jamie, what are you doing that for? We're not uh, playing with your. She's not, I don't know what she, this woman, this imposter did with Claire. <laughs> I think she ate her. This is not Claire. But I just, yeah, I, I don't know. So, I mean, I, I'm really trying to dig deep into this Claire Jamie thing. And figure out the reasons for it. Because I think that there have to be adaptation things that are, that are, that are 
causing some of these issues that we're having because so much of the other stuff is really good. But that really is where, you know, you have to find out all the details of what happened. And that has to be them, you know, being like, so then what happened? Well, then I went to the... Yeah. Yeah. I find myself copying um, passages from the books for friends who haven't read it, (coughs) which is pretty much Teresa. (coughs) So that they can get a feel for what it, what, how they really are. And can I just bring something up from last week really quick while we're bashing, I mean, talking about Claire. (laughs) Um, Teresa had the most interesting point. Again, my non book reading friend, my friend who hasn't read the books, she was talking about last week (coughs) and she said, (coughs) you know, with the whole carriage breaking down and her not making it back fast enough for the dinner party. And she's like, you know, it was was so great. It was such a modern day thought process and attitude. She's like, she knew she had that party coming up. Why did she go into work that day? And I thought, you know what? This party means everything. Mm-hmm. Why did she go to yes, the hospital you're that day? Right. Teresa, bravo. bravo. Because I, 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 I might have thought that again. I really need to go back and check my blog post from <clears throat> seven years ago, however long it's been. But I, I seriously was like, oh, my God, what a great point. Like, why did she go? Well, and, you know, they're, they're, <clears throat> I came across that explosion in the book. It really does happen. But I don't remember if it makes her late to the party or not. Um, you know, if it, I mean, if it did happen, it happened, and that's the way I went down, and whatever. I'm I, not gonna look I thought it, it did. But could you imagine Jamie sitting here greeting all of these people? And <clears throat> you know what? Actually, it did happen that way because that's how that's how um, they had to walk home, and Mary Hopkins got raped, and. They were, yes, it did sort of go down that way. So, <clears throat> you know, the TV show actually got it. Oh, yeah, this isn't the TV show as much as this is just Claire. Right. You know what I mean? Like, right. what are you doing going to the hospital? That's what I'm saying. I have to check my blog post from years ago to see if, if I thought in the book, too. That. What? If you thought that way in the book, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, anyway, yeah. So, let's keep going. Um, okay. So, anyway. <clears throat> Sorry again. I'm like so up. Uh, allergies are so bad, and I'm just like a flummy mess. That should be a band name, flummy mess. <laughs> but they I'm an like eyeball a mess. Flummy <laughs> mess. Uh, hi, well, I, flummy mess. I look like you know, like I don't know what. I don't want to say Zika virus because that would be. I, I shouldn't be making fun. Um, but my eyes are so red. I want to know what everybody else is like around the country. I just want to know, if, or is it just here right now, or is it the West Coast, too? Is it, oh, it's awful. And I, my eyes are just... rain and the dampness, it's just like one big, moldy, you know, disgusting... I, I look like Fear the Walking Dead. I could be a Don't walker. Talk about the hair. What? Do not talk about the hair. Oh, Do not talk about the hair. It's just bad. In the rain. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So... Um, so, eventually, Claire's like, uh, okay, I do a lot of Don Blanche, I guess it's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And it came quite possibly my favorite scene in the entire series so far. What, that scene? No. Oh, with Murtaugh and, um, and Jamie? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Murtaugh and Jamie, it's the morning after, and Murtaugh's been snooping around at Madame Elise's, and he has, what he found out was that there is a gang of, like, you know, dandies who, like, roam the streets uh, looking for, like, hot virgins so, so that they can, you know, do so that they get into this, like, you know, dandy club. Yeah, I had it. I didn't catch that the first time around. I was really, like, I watched <coughs> it again, and I was like, oh, so I don't remember that, if that was in the book or not either, but that was pretty cool that they, they not cool, but that was an interesting way to present it, that that's right. why, because right. they were trying to get into this. They're basically 18th century frat boys. Okay. Yeah, it's like an initiation. Only right. they weren't. They were older than that. The guy was old and gross. They're trying to get into Delta, Delta, Delta. Uh, I state your name. I state your name. <laughs> You're making me think of um, of um, what was the movie with Vince Vaughn? Uh, old school. <laughs> <laughs> or Revenge of the Nerds. 
<laughs> lambda, lambda, lambda. <laughs> Put the hands out there, everybody. Everybody, put the hands. Okay. Anyway, so so he's like, so yeah, that's all. That's all I found. It's some sort of gang initiation. Um, and then oh, I did write down before before the whole Murta apology. Sam at one point they like looked at him profile and I was like, oh, it's Heath Ledger. Like he really once in a while. I I thought that too. I'm gonna interrupt you for a second because I just realized. What? We were just talking about Claire. If anybody has any comments. <laughs> Hold him up till later. Should we? Hang on. Oh, he's up. Okay. You guys, special guest. I feel weird being on this with you guys. I really do. Maybe introduce the man, the myth, legend. Tom Stark. Well, you know what? I'm I'm really apprehensive about this. I gotta say, um, I'm not okay. I, <laughs> I'm really appreh sit with me, huh? I'm really apprehensive about this because I don't want I don't want the mop world to think I'm some type of like. Okay, better light from your left. If this is my better side, person. yeah, I get it. I don't want the mop world to think that I'm some type of <laughs> male chauvinist. Because it's not true. Like I'm, I'm about so. empowered women. I, it's it's all about the empowerment of women. I married a strong, opinionated woman, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. Yay. But with that said, I just can't stand Claire. <laughs> I, I'm I'm so done with Claire. I hated her in the books. I hated her in all. I hated her in all the books. But in the first season, they made her. Kind and you felt bad for her, like you know she got sucked through the rocks, and then all of a sudden she's in the middle of a war and a clan fight and this and that, and then it's Jamie and the, and you felt bad for her, and Frank's left alone and she wants to go back, but she says no, she's too. But the second season it all came flooding back, and 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 the second season is the reason why I just can't stand Claire. She's self-centered and she's egotistical, and, and the whole world evolves around Claire. It's if it's not about Claire. It's not there. That might that could be like our tagline. Like if the glove don't fit, you must have quit. If it's not, I just made that up. Cap, honestly, got cap. Boom. <laughs> I'm not Claire. It's just not. There. <laughs> Either way, the, the wor Johnny <laughs> world is Claire's minions just to make Claire's world better. I mean, like she's just Blackjack Randall. Literally, literally made James Malcolm Mackenzie Fraser his bitch. It happened. It happened. It happened in front of our eyes. You never would have thought it. No. You never could have made it up. Mm -mm. But it happened. And all he dreamed about, he had nightmares. He wanted to kill himself. He couldn't sleep with his wife. He's a mess. And the only thing that made that guy smile in 18 months was when Claire said, he's still alive. And you see this guy go... I get to kill him now. I get to, I get to watch him die. I'm going to be okay, Claire. And then she takes it all away from him. Why? Because it's not about Claire. The world has to revolve around Claire. I am so done. I hate her. I just, I hate Claire. Oh, that's a little I much. Claire is like the honey badger. She takes what she wants. That's right. I hate, but let me say this, okay? Side note. Take Sidebar. Sidebar, okay? Does that mean when, like off camera? Because you're not. No, 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 no. Okay. When I'm like a Jamie, right now. When Jamie walked down behind the Bastille, right in the gardens with King Louis. Oh, Louie we didn't get there his, yet. Is this his, okay? And his, and his yeah, entourage fine. and stuff. <laughs> and Jamie walks in. You got to admit, and I know you're thinking it. I know you're. Th you're not saying it, but you're thinking it. There's a little chemistry there. A little chemistry. <laughs> Jamie, you fact check, right? Well, yeah. Like he was. He there was chemistry down. between me and Mark. He walks down, <laughs> and like, he's like, uh, he's like, hello, Jamie. Hello, Jackie. Like, and, it, and it's like, the, the, the fireworks are going off behind him. You know? Like, Claire's not even in the picture. They're looking right through them, and like, there's a little twinkle. I, I, there's a little I, I twinkle in the eye. There's a little right twinkle. Now. What did you think about Claire when she, and we're skipping ahead. We'll go, we'll get back to it. But what right. did you think about Claire when she was like, hey, Alex Randall. I'm going to bail you out of the Bastille. 
Okay, uh, now let's go for a walk. All about so her. Stomp on your little dream. That's right. <laughs> this seems like a nice enough fella, right? Yeah. And like this, this woman who unfortunately had that, mis you know, that that terrible incident. Right. She seems like a a, a harmless woman, and he's just, she's just totally putting the kibosh on them for her. Right. For her own advancement, for her own good. She's just a terrible, terrible person. She's online with Blackjack Randall. Her and Blackjack are just about like here and there. I mean, like he's he's a he's a, he's a human stain. She's not that bad yet, but it's all about Claire, and that's what she did. That's what she did to that poor guy. Like she totally like she she killed his hopes just just for her own betterment. Because she thinks she's gonna control the future. She thinks she can control everything. I have Claire. Why don't you set aside your feelings for Jamie? Hmm? I mean, is she kidding? And I also have, before that scene, in caps, I have meddling Claire. And I was like, I have to get one at you a Scooby-Doo video of if it wasn't for that meddling Claire. And I have, don't you dare throw out that letter. Oh, I was livid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before that, when she was like, should I throw off the letter? Or, uh, she had his yeah. letter? Her, yeah. I mean, Mary Hawkins' letter? Well, I'm going to say, I did not have a good Claire night either. I, I, I was not having a good Claire night. When was the last time you liked Claire? <laughs> when they were back up in the Highlands, right? Am I wrong? I'm so sick of France, too. Maybe oh, I'm, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not part of this mop thing, and you guys do this all the time. You do a great job, and I'm not part of it. Now, but remember that we, our, some of, of our audience haven't read the books. I'm not going to jump ahead. So listen. I'm done with France, too. I'm done with the fancy clothes. I'm done with the neckties. I'm done with Jamie Frazier drinking probably port wine or, or some other liquor out of a stemmed glass sitting at a dinner table. He's a Highlander. He's a warrior. He should be wearing a kilt. It's about Scotland. It's about, it's about clans and about tartans and about colors and about feuds. and about. It's not about sitting at dinner tables in France. It's not... It, it, I'm I'm done with France. I am so sick of France. Like, I can't wait to get really back to the boat you guys. and go back Any across. writers out there, you got you really got to be careful with France because <laughs> nothing good ever happens in France. Look right. <laughs> <laughs> like at <in> World War Two. <laughs> Look right. at Omaha. You, and you also, gotta stop with the France. Let's right. remember, we're talking about a book series. We have some people from France who we love who come and watch it's fiction. The Okay, let me crack We love fiction. you, guys. Nothing good ever happens in France. In <laughs> fiction. Like, look at Les Mis. Look at Les Mis. They, they, they all us, die. They give us democracy and the croissant. Done. Because I'll tell you what, you give me a croissant and some brie and some chocolate and a glass of wine, and I'm in France in about two seconds, my friends. All right, I can't, I can't stay on, because this is your thing, and I don't want to interrupt. And I, I mean, I came on to talk, tell everybody how much I, I hate Claire, I, that's hate. Hate's a strong word, hate's but a strong word. it's appropriate. It's appropriate. Today. So if you don't have hate in your heart, you can't understand what love's all about. <laughs> and you have to hate to love. Sorry, I hate Claire. That's all I'm saying. Tracy, what is Clay going to say when he hears this? I don't know. Oh, I don't I, know. But it's I saw it. I, it's, it's bad in the books. Bad in the, Now she's bad in the show, too. I, I, maybe, maybe, maybe. We'll, we'll see what happens. In future episodes, but will you, Tom? Will you come back and join us again? Only if I have something to say. I, I felt <laughs> strongly about my hatred for Claire. Don't it's not, say you hate. Claire. If it's not about Claire, it ain't there. <laughs> <laughs> your 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 temporary disdain for Claire, not hate. Now, what was you that? Tom Stark, ladies and gentlemen. Tom Stark. <laughs> um. Where were we? I don't even remember. Oh, or, okay. Oh, okay. I, I do remember, remember because these are the notes I have because I don't have notes more toward the end. So let me go back right. to it real quick. So we're at the part. We're at the part that you love with oh. um, Sam has looked like Heath Ledger and now Murtaugh speaks. Don't oh my God. Okay. Murtaugh says, "I cannot forgive myself for what happened in that alley," and I have the look on Jamie's face shows that he knows. He can't feed Murtaugh a bunch of happy horse shit and go, oh, it's okay. No big deal. It's all right. No. I love, love, love that Jamie says, then you keep after him. 
How about when she kicked him out of the room? Come back. You no, can, can I come back in just yeah. for just for a minute? Yeah. How about when Claire Beauchamp's kicks him out of the room? This is a guy oh. she's known since birth. Since birth. What's Claire been around? 18 months? She's not even from there. She's from 1940. Kicks him out of the room. I know. I, I want mad. you to leave. Are you kidding me? He should have stood right up to her and said, he stays. He's yeah, part of my family. Yeah. We'll Are get you to kidding? that. Yeah. Just another reason for me to... <laughs> All right. Peace. Peace out. Peace out, yo. Mic drop. Mic drop. Oh, that so, was a so, mic drop so, if I ever saw one. We're so gonna need, we need to get a mic so that people can drop it. And then, yeah. And then Murtaugh says, I will lay just vengeance at your feet or be damned. Um... I was obliterated watching this. I was the, the, that's what I want from Jamie and Claire. The closeness of these two. The they, relationship. Their relationship. You, know you are their relationship like. You are feeling their relationship, the closeness of these two in your, deep down the depths of your soul, you are feeling the the bond between these two mm -hmm. it was mm -hmm. beautiful beautiful TV absolutely mwah, so well done um okay since you said that line which is actually very similar to um Samuel L Jackson and Pulp Fiction and I will strike him down oh, with don't, oh, Tom will come right back in here Tom knows every word of that so <laughs> normally both your assets would be dead as fucking fried chicken. But you happen to pull this shit while I'm in a transitional period, and I don't want to kill you. I have, in all caps, real, with lots of exclamation points, real, raw, male. I mean, and this sounds really silly, but I have, I love the manly aspect. Um, like, like, Jamie knows he can't say, oh, don't worry about him. He says, get off your ass and go find him, because that's what Murta, Murta needs to hear. All right. And speaking of that line, I need to call for a spoiler alert. Excuse me, spoiler alert. Was that line at all meaningful to you? I will lay just vengeance at your feet or be damned. That is a big old bucket of foreshadowing there, y'all. Oh, 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 oh. And, but it also makes me wonder, like, Because, okay, and this is a spoiler, so, like, really, really, I'm not kidding. Like, the little running thing below here, not kidding. Go um, away if Murtaugh, you have to Murtaugh lays the just vengeance at Mrs. Hugh Monroe's feet, if you recall. Okay. Um, so I'm wondering how much that whole story is going to change. I'm thinking that there will be no Hugh Monroe and there will be no Mrs. Hugh Monroe and Just Vengeance is going to be at Jamie's feet because that line is prophetic. Unless it was in the book and I'm forgetting it, but I don't know. Um, but it's, it's just too, it's too like literally what happens, <laughs> you know, to, to, um, to uh to 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 not to introduce another character that like it has me it's just a spoiler alert you already said spoiler alert say what's on your mind you sound like you're beating around the bush well no that's what that's what's on my mind because we know what happens is that Marta. i mean it's it's i'm not i won't say who who ends up you know getting it get, on the receiving end the vengeance but you it, gave it, the spoiler alert. basically <laughs> there's you know Marta lays just vengeance in the form of a person's head at the feet of not Jamie, but Hugh Monroe or Hugh Monroe's wife. But that's how that whole storyline wraps up. Okay. Anyway, I think it's it's a cool piece of foreshadowing. We'll see if it comes true. Okay. End of one. Claire okay. and Mary. <clears throat> Claire does admit Mary. She wrote a letter for Alex. Uh, Mar I just love Mary. I mean, again, I can't say it enough. The casting of the secondary characters is so bloody good. Um, she's just adorable. Um, she's adorable, she's very good, and I loved how she said, how Claire was like, well, at least you don't have to marry that old warty guy. <laughs> I know, that was Claire kind of being nice. Yes, Claire was good in this scene. Yeah, she was very nice, she was very nice. Yes, yes. Um, 
then I, I don't even remember where I don't even remember why I wrote Frank Alex narration. Claire just went. Claire, there was so much Claire narration in this episode. It was just, it was re, it was like harkening back to like the first couple episodes where like half of it was Claire talking to us off camera. Um, yeah. Really, but I have to say I would have liked it if Claire would have sort of <coughs> used that that little few minutes she had with Mary to, you know, you can't get into too much, but I kind of felt like she should cut, should have, no, not should have, maybe could have said something about, I don't want to sound cliche, but like, you know, Mary's sitting here like her first and only experience with sex was that, like, I wish Claire would have said, listen, you know, it's, it's, just it's, it's, that. it's a beautiful thing and you are going to like it again. You're not going to, you know what I mean? Like, I just felt like she could have said a few words and it's Claire. I think I expected her to say a few words, but she was very motherly and sweet with her and, 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 um, you know, comforting and stuff, which was nice to see. Right. I have no issues with that scene, so whatever. Um, you what? You what? You what? I have no issues with that scene. I thought it was funny. No, no, no. It was, it was a good scene. Um, and I don't, really don't know what, I really don't know what I meant by the Frank Alex narration. See, we need it all. So clearly we did not because I don't remember. So, whatever. Then, so we see Jamie back at the office and in stroll. BPC! <laughs> Chucky! Hello, Chucky! Mark me, James! Mark me, James. By the end of the season, how many markings will there be? Do you, do you want to venture a guess? I would like to see the body <coughs> prints in like a horrific situation going, Mark me! <laughs> I'm going to say we're up to seven because we, you, you might have seen our little compilation. That I think was was shared a whole boatload of times. Um, Can't put that together all by yourself. Yahoo! Um, so this was eight. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with lucky number thirteen total for the season of Mark Mees. Carol. We're at eight, and it's only episode five. Hmm. On the one hand, I want to say there's going to be more than that, but on the other hand, I think Mark Me might be on its way out. Like, I think maybe they... That last week was, like, its crown and glory, and this is, like, the, the um, falling have, action before yeah, the Yeah, I, I don't think I can guess that. I think it may have peaked, but... I will tell you what, in the beginning, season, I mean, episode maybe two, when they introduced him, I was, like, skeeving. Like, I hated him, and I was, I was like, wow, I can't stand this guy, and I couldn't wait for him, but now I'm like, ew. And now I wish I had a BPC in my life, because I <laughs> totally want to go out with BBC and just listen to him. When he <laughs> says... Do not plague me with workman's concerns. I wrote that too, too. <laughs> Do not plague me with workman's concerns. Do you, you, almost, you almost find yourself agreeing. <laughs> but like, yeah, Jamie, he's the body prince. Don't bother him with such trivial nonsense. Oh, my God. He has better things to yeah, do. What work to do, Jamie? money. He has money to raise. Mm -hmm. He has wine to drink out of those fantastic glasses. Mm -hmm. This is the third glass that I'm... I know, right? He has horse to bed. Wait, hang on. Yeah, horse to bed. Mm -hmm. Who is? He, has, he needs to my, need more hues. Those glasses that are like this big. You were talking about the... They have the little ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah the dab. Are these the ones you were talking yeah. about? They're, they're, like, they're like port wine glasses. Mm -hmm. And they have the little... But they're... It's like a whole glass, but then the stem is like in the inside with the little ball. It's, oh my um, God. Hey, Pottery Barn. Outlander collection. Solomon. You oh, are not wow. kidding. But I am telling you right now, I find myself almost missing BPC. <laughs> like, I, I think I'm waiting week to week for him at this point. Um, He's just so crazy. He is really crazy. So, so wait, did you have, do you have your bet? Do you have your number? I don't. 13. I, 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 I'm not a, too much of a betting gal, and I just am a little bit, 
I, I don't feel strongly enough to, to bet on. Pull out a poll off the end of the season. Put it in the comments, whatever. Or we'll, like, figure out who wins at the end of the season. Well, and you'll get a big old thing <laughs> from us? No, we'll <laughs> get a song hey, from I us. I have an Outlander flask. <laughs> we have those, um, oh, we have those biscuits. Did you ever eat your Outlander biscuits? I ate my biscuits. Are you kidding? We ate those things, like, day one. I have not eaten but. my Outlander biscuits yet. Um, we should, you should thank the, you should thank the biscuit maker. Okay, first of all, you've never heard of Walkers. Um, should I go downstairs and get them? Because I know. No, I are. have the box. Hang on. So she leaves me on camera. I just not like, I I could I know where they are. And I could just come on downstairs. Are you finding them? Because I know exactly where they are. All right, well, go get them because I had them last well, You week. have to talk to the people while I go. All right, I'm going to talk to the people. Hi, people. Okay, so here's the deal. So I got a letter from Walkers who make that amazing shortbread. And they made a, um, Jamie and Claire, they made an Outlander box, um, a special limited edition. So they sent them to some of the Outlander bloggers and websites. And um, I did a blog post about them a while ago, a couple months ago. And um, they sent us an awesome box. But, you know, it's Walker's shortbread. I ate it in like two seconds. My whole family was like, give me a cup of tea. And um, we whipped them out, and they're awesome. The only shortbread better than Walker shortbread is my brother-in-law's homemade, John Stark's homemade um, shortbread. So he's Scottish. What can I say? There it is. Isn't it beautiful, you guys? Look at that box. You guys can all order this on their website. Don't go online and order somewhere like eBay where they're – eBay is charging like – probably moldy, too. Well, they're, no, because they're, they're such a new item that they wouldn't be expired yet. But they're, they're, they're charging like $25 or something for a box. I haven't opened it up. Should I open it and eat one? It's just Walker's shortbread. Have you never <laughs> Walker's shortbread? We yeah, but I just, I've been like saving it. All right, you got to remember something. I'm in a Scottish household. We buy <laughs> shortbread. We buy Walker's like shortbread. shortbread. Um, what? We like our shortbread. Oh, and you know what? I should have done this when Tom was here. Yeah, but Tom's Tom's grandmother, who I don't believe you ever met, Grandma Elsie, um, today is her birthday, May 5th. And the reason also, not only is it, do I want to bring it up because it's May 5th, but also she was married to Thomas, Thomas to Tom's Scottish grandfather, who was directly from Paisley, Scotland. Yay! Yay. All right. We Tom, next time you have to do your Scottish accent. Um, if it's not Scottish, it's crap. He says, Tobe, Tobe. Okay. We got a little off track, but we're all good. So I said 13. Leave us through your guess in the comments, and, you know, maybe we'll figure out some Tracy okay. will send you some strong <laughs> Um You know so what? You know what? I think <laughs> I could get walkers. I can, I'm not promising, but I'm going to try, and, and whoever comes up with the best one, maybe Walkers will send you guys a box. Yes. Let's try they email me from They email me from time to time and ask if I want to do something. And let's do that. So we'll have, a, we'll have we'll make yeah. it official, whatever, but like, cause as long as we do it before the end of the season, we're good. But yeah. you'll put it on the blog. Let's have yeah. a contest, but I think that'd be fun. Okay. Except there, and a lot, like, tied numbers, we'll just, like, pick one randomly to win. Awesome. Okay. And I'm saying 13, and I'm eligible to win. Um, okay. <laughs> I think you're winning boxes behind you, so I don't think you are. Okay. You can win, but somebody else comes in second. So wait, so then then we, then Chuck starts talking about this like scheme, which is basically like, oh, yeah, all the investors backed out because I'm a douche, but like I do have this one guy that's going to like, we have another scheme, and it's the Compt, and I'm going to buy, he wants to, have, he's, he's bringing in this shipment of wine. I'm going to buy the wine, but I need half the money for it. So I'm going to go to a bank, get the money, buy the wine, sell the wine, pocket the profit, and use that to totally, like, um, you know, go to war. Okay, stop. Because he said that the, the con was short of funds. So he's not... Right, he's bringing in some of the money to buy to to buy to bring the wine in, but then the, he's going to sell the wine. The Bonnie Prince Charlie, right, is bringing in half. He has secured half the funds. <clears throat> Why don't you bypass the damn wine and secure the funds? For the 
So he okay. secured half the funds. Half the funds. So I'm going to assume that Colm has... See, guys? See how I have to make the big book whole? Because I feel like a complete douche saying Colm. Because I don't speak French. I don't pronounce things like... Well, anyway. So... He's going to, so pa, are we to assume that the, that the comp is going to put in half the money and Bonnie Prince Charlie is going to put in half the money. They're going to buy it from Jamie and then they're going to sell it elsewhere and whatever profit. And anybody, if you haven't read the books, they made huge profit on some of this stuff. So they're going to, that's the profit they're going to take and they're going to put all that toward the cause. I don't know if they're buying it from Jamie or not. That, none of that was really clear. Yes, was, yes, he said, we're going to get it from you. We're going to, you're the one who's going to, yes, Jamie's the one. I just thought Jamie was the one that was, like, making all the arrangements for everything. <clears throat> I wasn't sure who was buying and who was selling, but what, but you, but to your point, like, why doesn't Chuck just go to the bank and be like, um, I need to borrow some money for some, uh, to buy some, uh, wine. <laughs> I need to buy some to fund my revolution. I mean, buy some wine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean, like, I, who knew it was that easy? <laughs> to fund my revolution, I mean, to bring to my dinner party. <laughs> um, to, to my hood. To my hood. So, all right. So they've got this, like, you know, convoluted scheme. But now, here's something that was interesting, and I was like, now you all, y'all, like, non-book readers. Tell us if this, if you were like, what? Or like, huh? Um, when Jamie's like, oh, yes, I've heard some rumors about that. Calm, so John Saint-Germain, like he runs in demonic circles. <laughs> we're all like, non-book reader, non readers like. Non-book <laughs> readers like, what's this about, Jamie? <laughs> so I'm sitting, my first reaction was, they haven't mentioned that. And my second reaction was, well, I know. I, I guess mean, we're supposed to just. Yes, we know this because we are book readers. But, like, did that throw you for a loop? Because it was, like, out of effing left field. Well, let me tell you something else that while we're talking about loops being thrown. <laughs> That's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Bonnie Prince. The Bonnie Prince walks in, hi, James, and says, The female haze that once clouded my mind has been lifted. After he did this to Jamie, okay, he walks in, Jamie kisses his hand, he grabs Jamie's face and does one of these and says, the female haze that once clouded my mind has been lifted. Why? All we know is that last week, Louise is telling everybody, or, or it becomes known that Louise is pregnant, mm -hmm. and that Louise is like, oh yes, my husband and I are very excited, and the husband's all, yeah, I'm excited, and... What's his name? Bonnie Prince Charlie's like, what the what? And now all of a sudden, the haze that has once clouded his mind has been lifted. He says nothing else the entire episode about it. Why has it been lifted? How has it been lifted? Uh, that's that bother me at all. Is that all of a sudden not important? Yes, what that's exactly thing? it. Because that's, that's who he is. He's like, he's like you. Like, when, when I say, I'm like, squirrel! He's like, Oh, Louise, I love you so much. Oh, what? Okay. Like, so are we to assume that that's pretty much it with he and Louise and that it's not going to be mentioned again and they're just well, sort he's of like over her until, you know, she like walks by and he's like. I think I felt it was misplaced. I felt like why bring it up at all? Because to like let us know like, oh, he's over her now. No, I'm, no. I mean, I don't know whether he's over her or not, but like, it's just, it's just him being like, "Yeah, I'm moving on." Yeah, it was, no, I am over her. It was the first thing he said when he walked in the room, and then he blew it off and went on to something else. And I just, I thought, did something end up in the cutting room floor? No, like, I think he was just like, "Okay, here's the deal." Like, I was totally like into her, and she like screwed with my mind, and I'm done with her. I am done, bro. I am done. I am all about, I am eye on the prize. Eye on the prize. Okay. That's what all I right. So he's basically saying, my mind is clear. Let's get to work. Yes. Let's okay. do this. All right. Let's all right. rock. Um, I can grasp that. I can, I can wrap my brain around that. Okay. Um, so, 
Yeah. So because so, I went back to them, didn't we move on from them? Yeah. So oh, Saint so Germain party. runs in Ebonic circles, whatever. Okay. So now it's time for the walk of Claire and Alex. Well, we've broken this down a lot with Tom already. Um, that I, I, Claire okay. must have sprung him from jail. Um, Claire has concerns um, so about Matt and Jerry. So just STF you <laughs> and let fate happen. Um, oh, well, we forgot one little thing with, with, with um, Chuck, which is that like he's like, oh, yeah, so Jamie, like, so I talked to the comp, and like you guys are going to work that shit out because like, I don't have time. Who oh, don't have time for that. Um, yeah. So yeah. And Jamie's like, uh, okay, he tried to kill my wife, but what? Yeah, and don't plague me with workman's concerns. <laughs> Okay. Pull me another glass of water. <laughs> I sit, turned to Tom last night, and when we were watching this, and I'm like, I just want to drink wine all day like <laughs> people do. I, I'm telling you, they just, they just, they just, like, they, they have a high tolerance level. It's all I've said. Holy I've said. cow. I know, right? Right? Um. So, yeah. So... Claire and Alex walk around. Claire's clearly trying to. Oh, she. Oh, we we missed. I missed the part where she's thinking about whether to. That's. Oh, that's what the whole like Frank Alex narration is. The whole thing with her and the letter at the fireplace. Should I throw it away? Should I not? <laughs> Did we really need to go on in narration for five minutes of her? No. Like, and then I need to do this, and then I need to do that. Couldn't she just like sort of stand there with the letter at the fire? You know what? I've seen a couple TV shows here and there. I kind of know. I kind of know where you're going with the whole, like, letter, fire. Letter, fire. <laughs> I might be able to figure this one out. I mean, like, really? Letter, really? fire. <laughs> I, you're totally right. You're totally right. We are a TV watching audience. <laughs> If she, you're totally right. If she had just stood there for for ten seconds with the letter addressed to yep, Alex, and yeah, to, the to, fire to, and done this. to the best deal to whom it concerned. All I'm picturing in my mind right now is Carol Burnett, like in that Gone with the Wind scene <laughs> on the Carol Burnett show. I don't know why. Because <laughs> I said she should be standing in front of the fire with a letter like this. I don't like to think it was Carol Burnett. Um. Okay. So anyway, so yeah, so Claire and Alex talk, and Claire's like, "Yeah, you should totally jump her her own gun." And Alex and, is and like, Claire, I was a little impressed that after the massive coughing fit, she didn't whip out a stethoscope <laughs> and, and talk about pulling out some some type of herbs <laughs> that she could concoct that he could boil and, <clears throat> and make a paste. Well, she used all her herbs for um, Mary Hawkins. Her, no, you know. I'll tell you why. Because my girl wants him dead. She's like, keep coughing, Alex. Keep coughing. <laughs> no, she likes him. Poor she guy. Him. I know. I, Tracy, I'm not serious, but I mean the fact that she doesn't want him in the picture with Mary because she's all, Mary's got to be with Fra I'm Frank. Mary's got to be with Blackjack Randall. She can't right. be with Alex. Right. And like, you'd wish that on your worst enemy. Yeah. I mean, I know that like, you know, okay, clearly like. Frank or, or um, Blackjack and Mary have to get married, have to like, you know, sperm and egg need to meet in order for Frank to be born. But like, you know, does Claire know her way with the turkey baster? Or come on. Like, you know, I, get and, the two in the room and be like, okay, don't ask. Blackjack, you go off and do your thing. Yes. Mary, you yes. go over there, spread yes. your legs. And, and, and I, don't ask about this turkey baster. Yes. <laughs> I don't happen to have one here, head. <laughs> um, I seriously also, I would just want to thank everybody at Stars and Ron Moore and everybody involved in the fact that we didn't have to be subject to the same old cliche, tuberculosis, cough in the tissue. Oh, yeah. We, we, got, we got the cough in the tissue and we got a little sideways, like, glance, but we didn't have to see the bloody handkerchief that's obviously that he's got tuberculosis or whatever. I'm assuming it's tuberc TB. Because that's what they always do. And then they go like this. Thank oh, yeah, right. you. Thank you for, like Tracy said, we've seen some TV. Thank you for knowing that we'd figure it out. Mm. Okay. So we move from Claire and Alex and their stroll. To Jamie, Jamie and Nicole. and the cons at the table together. And I have one thing to say about that. All right, everyone. Gird your loins. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was a sausage fest. <laughs> oh my god. Like seriously. All right. All right, ladies and whatever dudes are interested in this, like. <laughs> if there are dudes out there watching this who are interested in this, I want to go out with you. <laughs> Tracy and I love you and we want to hang. I uh, mean, like, damn. Damn. Like, that could have been the whole show. That could have been the whole show. Just, just like, sit them at the table have him have the comp talk French. Have Jamie just be like, like sort of like glower at him. Done. I'll watch an hour of that. Like no questions asked. <laughs> oh my! I don't know why, but the comp last week I had him as Sasha Baron Sasha Baron Cohen, and this week I have I'm seeing a little bit of Robbie Benson. <laughs> I actually see the Robbie Benson thing way more than the con. And then no, Sasha no, I Baron didn't Cohen. see. I didn't think he looked like Sasha Baron Cohen. I just he reminded me of the char one of the characters that Sasha Baron Cohen. I could see him as a Sasha Baron Cohen character, but in this eyebrows and eyes, I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, we have to move it along because this is just sad and pathetic, and I don't have another one to read. Though. Tracy, you I mean, gotta have the backup. I'm gonna have to start. I'm gonna have to start on that. <laughs> All right, so okay. then Jamie and Claire chit chat. Well, wait, 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 wait. So yeah, I, I don't even, I don't even know what they talk about. He doesn't want. Oh, Jamie needs to have the buyer set up before the comp is going to like do any business with him. Okay, done. Then we. I don't think you need to pronounce the T. Comp. comp. The comp. Just the comp. The comp. The comp. The comp. If if, if, if I told you, oh, if, this show has renewed my desire to take French. I know. I know. Then we see Claire and Jamie having brandy on the veranda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because that's pretty much what this, like, a scene was. Yeah. So I wrote down Claire and Jamie have turned into Claire and Frank having brandy on the veranda. Brandy on the veranda. Um, so Jamie gives Claire some spoons. That are this big <laughs> but meant for baby. <laughs> I'm like, those no, are no, tits. No, 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 wait. Are they meant for babies? They're yes, apostle spoons. He said they were for the baby, the bairn. Well, they were like they were like. They I've were got like it right now. Present. Hang on. And Claire's all. Jamie, these are spoons. <laughs> Which one is the Judas spoon? Look, they've. Listen. They've been passed down for years. They've been passed down. Jamie, Miss Family for years. For our wee bairn. Spoons for our wee bairn. She said she was so full of excitement. She could okay. I should have thought to look that up. I mean, because I bet you that's a thing. Apostle spoons have got to be a thing. That, that's a lot of sweet potatoes. <clears throat> that's a lot of beechwood <laughs> apples. The, baby is gonna, the baby's going to choke on all of that. Those spoons are just way too big. But I want to know about the Judas spoon. This like I mean, you can't the Judas, the Judas spoon has to be like the thirteen spoon. Like like you just can't use it. Like you gotta leave that one out, you know? So the Judas what spoon who? is gonna like F up the baby. The the who? I know how to deliver She's a nurse and she knows how to deliver a baby. <laughs> That's okay, so wait. Kind of, I mean that was that Beach was Nut. Sweet. I called it Beach Nut. It's be I mean I called it Beach Wood, it's Beach <laughs> Nut. Beach I said that's a, that's like half the jar in one spoon. <laughs> Open up! <laughs> it goes to airplanes. <laughs> you go get a lot of it. I hope you like it. <laughs> then you use the peanut spoon to like deny to the baby like what food it's having. Like, <laughs> oh no, 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 no. This isn't a strange piece. <laughs> no, 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 no. What's that? <laughs> No, this is um cake flavored baby food. <laughs> Tom's favorite line for little kids. Is that big bird? <laughs> um but I uh, that was yeah, it was she so she wonders if she'll be a good mother and Jamie says of course she will. They'll they'll do it together. Um well the bet the by far the best thing about that scene is that we heard go put that away. We heard the Gaelic. We heard the Gaelic. We heard, heard the Gaelic. I, I don't know how to say it, so shut up, everyone. But like the money, money done or whatever it is, we—that's what he said. You know, can't we just throw a little bit more of that in? 
There should be. I mean, it should, well, we said this last week. It should be Sasanak, Sasanak, Sasanak. We should never call her Claire. There, towards the end of this episode, you can call her Claire. That, I'll give you that. Do you remember season one, which I brought this up last week? I'm bringing it up again. You're tearing my guts out, Claire. Mm-hmm. That's when he would call her Claire. Yep, Any yep, other yep. time, Sasanak. Okay. So he... So yeah, yeah, yeah. The Gaelic was great. So that that was a step. So that now was nice. we go to the function at Downton Abbey. I mean, first time. Uh, oh my God! I want to go to France. Having having bashed France to within an inch of his life, I totally want to go there. Fictional France. You're Fictional not France is bad. Real right. France, good, good, good. I they so showed go. that wide shot, and I'm uh, like, um, oh, I must go. There. <laughs> but, Carol, let's um, go there. You know what? I'm totally not that busy in June. Your kids get out of school in June. Like, you know, send them off to, like, you know, John and Linda's, and let's go to France. I love France. You love France. <laughs> let's go to France. <laughs> Tracy. You guys, can you imagine Tom Stark in France? Like, that, that, like, seriously. Would that not be the best? Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think it would be. <laughs> okay. So, they're at Versailles. Versailles is amazing to look at. Here's my question. I was a little surprised that Jamie was wearing his kilt to court. Um, I think that's Jamie's way. And by a little, I mean a lot. And I, I, the, the only thing I could think of is, like, okay, he's, he's there to show Sandringham some horses. So, maybe he, like, since he's going to be, like, in the stables... You know, maybe, like, he's, like, putting his kill on, you know, to sort of dress down or whatever. Except he's not really in the stables. You know, Sandringham isn't wearing, like, you know, his, like, day suit or whatever. Um, it was kind of weird to me. I, I don't know. Sandringham wasn't in was his day It was surprising to me. I don't think it's weird. I will tell you why. He's got on his Sunday best. That jacket is beautiful. Oh, I'm not, I'm not that, complaining. I'm not complaining. And, no, I know you're not complaining. I'm just, I'm adding to what you're saying. And I'm saying that jacket is beautiful, that that he looks amazing. But I think that Jamie wears the kilt when he goes there to make a statement. I am a Scot. I think, honest to God, that's why I think he does it. Because they're all dressed in their finest. And Jamie's finest, in his mind, uh, what, what was Diana's line? A Scottish Highlander in full regalia. like. Well, yeah, I, but then why didn't he do that when they went to the Versailles in the first place, when Claire was wearing the red dress? I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's just a horse thing. Maybe. I just, it was weird to me. I, it really, it kind of stood out just because, like, we've sort of made, I'll be, I'll be curious to see, like, if there's any costume discussion. Um, and you guys should all be, by the way, be reading Tom and Lorenzo every week because they do on Wednesdays a breakdown of the costumes that's so insightful, it's not even funny. Tom and Lorenzo, just Google it. Um, but So maybe we'll, we'll learn some information about that. But I just felt like that was really, like, they've set up so far that he wears his kilt, like, to the hospital. Like, when he's in, like, more of these parts of town that are more, like, you know, not high highbrow, you know, upper class. Hello, so, we dog. <clears throat> oh, I love that. So, so I don't know. I, I would be curious to hear what people thought, and maybe it's in the book that he did that. But I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, maybe he's saying? just trying to coordinate with Claire's lovely outfit. Claire's l- l- outfit was lovely. Claire lovely. had the best hat this, this episode. I hat where she went to see Mary Hawkins, and it sort of went like this. So yeah. Great. So great. I, I couldn't believe, like, when I saw them, I was like, oh, it's that scene. Because, you know, you've seen some right. shots right. Right. along right. the way. And I was like, this is, oh. And I'm going to be the one to say first that I freaking loathe this Annalise and just want to punch oh, her. She is a bitch. You know, I just thought of something else, too. And, I mean, we'll get to this whole scene. But, like, maybe maybe it's just he's just in the kill because to sort of, like, emphasize the contrast with Blackjack Rand. That's as good as I. That's, that's Just all I got. Just to remind us that he's Scottish. <laughs> that's all I got. That's all I got. Okay, so yes, Annalise is a bitch. I'm sorry, maybe she's nice, whatever, but she just strikes me as like, um, she's just strikes me as like, 
you know, kind of a mean girl, kind of a, like, you know, I had him once, and don't ever forget it. And Annalise, let me just tell you, as What's we learned, point? you don't want to, you don't want to F with angry all the time, Claire, in France. <laughs> and pregnant. And pregnant. Maybe, Maybe that's why she's angry all the time. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I never thought of that. Maybe it's like she's still in the first trimester, although they've been there for like nine months and a half right now, so... Um, okay. But, yeah, but no, you do not, Annalise, Annalise, are you listening? I know, I know your English is not good, but, like, listen to me, listen to me. You do not want to piss off already pissed off Claire in France. Pregnant Claire in France. Pregnant already pissed off pregnant off Claire, Claire in France. Yeah, Not a good idea. Okay? Yes. For future reference. Right. So, Claire might just want herself a Malamar, and they don't have them in 18th century France. Um, that is, maybe Claire wants some pepperoni pizza. Yup, yup, yup. Um, okay, so there, so she's like, oh, sure, I'll go for a walk with you. Uh -huh. um, I don't know why I say Jamie dodges. Oh, I know why. Because this is a good scene, actually. Um, Sandringham was like, so, yeah, I, uh, so I got, like, you know, I figured out your little friend Chuck, and he's kind of a douche, isn't he? Like, what's up with you hanging around him all the time? Like, you're really, like, that into him? And Jamie was like, uh, no, I'm into Scotland. Uh, what's up with, you know, and what of it? Like, Scotland is, like, awesome and whatever. And Sandra was like, fair enough, good, okay. So that was, like, a nice, like, recovery from Jamie there because... Yes. <clears throat> Sandringham is definitely on to, um, Chuck and his smart me ways. Smart me. Um... Yeah. So I'm standing there, I'm like, mock me. Mock me. He is a douche. A wouldn't, that be a, wouldn't that have been great if if Sandringham had said mark me? I James, know, mark, cool. James cool. mark me. Okay. Um, so meanwhile, um, Annalise and Claire are still wandering around. Can I say Claire's it? Had just about Can I say it? What? Can I say it? About Annalise? No. No, wait. Now, you know. Because I, I did think it was kind of funny when that Claire was just like, yeah, you know what? Um, oh. You know what? Yeah, you know what? he still is impulsive. So shut, shut the bloody oh. up. Then, go ahead. Oh, 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 they're making the leg. The oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right. Can I just, I, I'm going to nutshell right. it. And by let, say me just, that, let me just say, let me just say. That I was borderline disgusted with myself. I felt like Jamie when in season one when when he his body betray betrayed him. Your body was betraying you. I was. Oh, I was like, holy! That is so. Oh my. Wow! I was I got it, Carol. You must have been sort of like you were not like you were on a break with Tobias, but like oh, Tobias and I are back together. <laughs> <laughs> he showed up as Blackjack, who I couldn't look at all summer long. Remember, for the longest time, mm -hmm. I couldn't look. At him, I couldn't remember after the show. Mm -hmm. I couldn't watch it again. I couldn't turn on. Like I was like, <clears throat> for the longest time, I was. I poor Tobias Menzies because I was like, I can't even look at this guy. He shows up with all of that green behind him, and he's in the bright red and the blue, and he shows up as Black Jack Randall, skank extraordinaire. <laughs> Water? It's a water night. Let me let me just interrupt myself and say, when it's a talisker night, it's a water night. I'm out of margaritas and I'm sad. Okay, so <clears throat> sorry about that. That's okay. So you, I believe I was at the lush rolling hills, green hills. <laughs> so you're at lush rolling green hills, and this, and it's. Black Jack Randall, it's not even Frank. In the beginning of the season, Frank showed up. And what did I keep saying? Shut up, Frank. Black Jack Randall shows up and my math drops. And I'm like, 
Wow. What's wrong with me? Oh, nothing wrong with you. It's all very, very right. Very, I, very right. I should be disgusted. I should be sobbing. I should <laughs> be... I should be... And I think this is where Tom was going earlier. Like, I should be... I think everyone... Tom, too! We were all smitten with... with just enamored of... I, I can't even... What was... Why? What? what? Explain it to me. Okay, I'm gonna break it down for you. First of all, to preface this, what I wrote down, like, oh my... What I wrote down is this. Oh my God, this is the best scene ever in the history of scenes. Um... If that whole sequence, I mean, that was certainly the best thing we've seen so far this season, and quite possibly the best sequence so far in the series. I'm going to go there and say that, and I don't know whether it's just because the the first the, the episodes prior to this one in season two have been a little lackluster to us, right? Um, or whether it was really that good, but like. Oh my god. Oh my god. I mean like the, the the chemistry, the chemistry that was and it's not even chemistry because like that's like I'm gonna give Tobias I wanna give Tobias just so much credit. I mean, not like other people he were reacting to him. That. He was like, you know what, you guys, he was like the Death Star, okay? And he was just pulling in. Everything. His tractor beam was pulling in everybody that was around him. So he like turns around and he has a he has an interaction with Claire. He pulls her in, okay, with his like magnetic force, okay. Then Jamie comes along. Well, no, but even before that, like even Annalise. Annalise is like, ah. Oh. Then the king comes along. Oh God, that was so good. Um, pull. Well, he sort of pulls. I mean, just. The interplay between Tobias and like everything around him was like, like, like light years to keep the the, the Star Wars uh, metaphor going. Or um, what the hell is that? Light speed years, I guess, ahead of any 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 feeling or 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 any sort of chemistry that we have experienced with any of the characters including Jamie and Claire, thus far this season. My That's my mic All, I have, all um, I have to say is wait till Auntie gets a hold of this. I mean, and it's all, I mean, I gotta <laughs> say, I think the credit goes to Tobias. I, I just, I, I'm just, I wrote down, and I'm, and um, cover your ears if you're, if you're, they're a little tender. Tobias is a fucking genius. He, he but it goes I mean, genius. It, it <laughs> wasn't gets, just, it wasn't just the acting, the presence. It was, he was stunningly beautiful. It was creepy. I was like, you couldn't take your eyes off him. Yeah, he was magnetic. He was magnetic. He was magnetic in a way that nobody so far this season has been. Like, not even close. Not even, I mean, there's interesting characters. I mean, trust me, the cop's pretty magnetic. But, like, you know, if it's a magnetic contest between him, the comp and Tobias or uh, a blackjack, forget it. Like done, over, done. Well, Boom. I, I blackjack have, will like just like slay him with his like magnetic eyes. And I yeah. have to say that I love that. Just a little bit of advice about Parich can make the king love you <laughs> because the king had Jamie's back. The king knew what was up. Like not the extent of that, but. The minute he walked up, he knew Claire was stiff back. He yeah. knew he knew there was a problem, and he dove right in. He had Claire's back. He had Jamie's back, and it was fantastic to watch. Um, I do want. I have to backtrack just a little bit. It really creeped me the hell out when Blackjack um, calls her Claire, almost like he's Frank. Has he ever called her Claire before? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know that he's, I don't know. I think he calls her, like, Madam Fraser or Madam or whatever. I don't know how many times he's actually called her Claire. And it sounded, I mean, it clearly it sounded like Frank. And it, like, freaked me out. It was like, oh, my God. 
Um, so, oh, oh my god, oh my god, when it's just the two of them, and he's she tries to get away, and he blocks her every time. <gasps> Jesus Christ, it was so good. It was so good. But how about when Jamie turns around and walks back and she's like... No, 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 because I have more to say, I have more to say, I have more to say. Um, just Louis, the King Louis is just fabulous. He's fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. I love him. He's so great. He's so great. Like, he was so... I just, I, I'm sorry, I like wrote like a half page of notes on like on like 30 seconds of stuff. Um, he's, he's so great. He's so... His reactions are so small, but like so funny, and so like 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 you know, take a knife and stab it into Blackjack. Um, when Claire has to introduce Blackjack Randall to the King of France, using all the like eighth leader of dragoon shit in French, like oh my god, I was like, that must be killing Claire, killing her, killing. But the king knew but the it. The king knew it, and he was so nice to her. And there's going to be a spoiler here, so I will issue my spoiler alert. Excuse me, spoiler alert. Um, Claire is totally like looking at King Louis, like I get to sleep with you later, right? <laughs> because I'm totally loving you right now. <laughs> I swear to God, like I kind of forgot about that, and I'm like, like that's still on, right? Is that still? <laughs> That's still, like, that's about two episodes from now, right? Like, I just clear that up. I keep watching. Hang on, hang on. I keep watching and thinking, no, they're not going to do that. They're going to, that's probably cut out. They're not going to address that. And yet they do. If I'm Katrina, I'm like, hell yeah, we're doing that. Remember two C episodes ago, I didn't think they were going to address Jamie and the Hoos. No, but they did. (laughs) Um, All right. Is that, are we done with the spoiler? Yes. We're done. Okay. Um, so, then... Oh, I can't even do the scene after this. Then, then, Jamie comes, um, strolling over, and, the, uh, again, did so you great. See, did you so see great. him? Did, I could see him. I don't know if we were supposed to. I just, I just, you could see him in the background as blur. Yes, yes, come, yes, yes. And you're like, yes. turn around, turn around, run, run. <laughs> Drive away, horse, run! Poltergeist, drive away, Dad, drive away! <laughs> um, and then, um, it's so funny, once, like, once he gets low to what's going on, in terms of ki- the king, like, thinking that Blackjack is, like, a, you know, complete douche, the then he's all like, knows. oh yeah, you were hurt, what was it, sheep? Yeah. Oh my god, that was so funny. Oh so my funny. god. You know, it was his castle. Oh, oh my god. So uh, funny. I just wrote down, Jamie is back and ready to rock and roll, bitches. Did um, you see, you know what's so funny is that I didn't notice the first time, but I just noticed it now because I have it on I'm sitting here. I thought it was Jamie's hand on his sword. It was, it was Blackjack's Jack's hand. No, it was Blackjack. He's Jack. thinking, I think Jamie's about to kill me. <laughs> wow. I know. Right after he had just told Claire... Like, um, yeah, Jamie is not going to kill me because, you know, then he's going to, like, hang because it's illegal in France. Um, but, <clears throat> oh, and an aside, Jamie's all like, oh, yeah, I think the weather's supposed to be nice all week. Did they really have, like, meteorology like that back then? No. Like, did they have a five-day forecast back then? They had some scary-looking, older-than-dirt person with, like, a cape and a messed-up face living in a cave that they would check in with once in a while. <laughs> and the farmer's almanac. And the farmer's almanac. And Jamie is the farmer at heart, you know. So I guess he does know. Um, okay. So, so okay. So all that goes down. It's all just like, I mean, fist pumps and like, just, just like, oh my God. I, I, that wasn't even fist pumps because I was just like riveted. Riveted. So Claire makes an exit and, oh, Claire's like, you know, I'm feeling him well. And the king's all, the king loves her. The king loves her. It's like, oh, madame, you know, you go. You do what you need to do. Um, so then when Jamie goes back and he and Blackjack talks, how loudly did you scream when Blackjack put his hand on Jamie's chest like this? Oh. My. God. I, I was like, 
was freaking out. That was such a... Teddy Bear <laughs> had its cheese! Teddy Bear had its cheese! Teddy Bear had its cheese! You think you want some cheese? <laughs> such a good moment. Totally, totally, <laughs> totally. I was like, oh no, he does not have his hands on his chest. Now, I want to know, and again, I need to Google this or whatever. Like, is that like a thing? Like, is that like, you know, when you accept a dual challenge, do you have to be like, say like, chest. Know, by my hand and my heart, I will kill you or whatever. I don't know. Um, that was just freak. Hey, no. Um... Yeah, was it necessary to touch his heart? Um, so they leave, and with it, go, with them goes the best scene by far of like the entire series, perhaps so far. Um, so they get home, and Jamie is so he's like, Fergus, you know, go fetch me more talk because I got some dueling plan. And Claire's like, to the best deal, you know, pronto. Um, and so then Jamie and Marta are playing the duel, and should it be pistols, or should it be swords, or this, or that? And Claire's like, it's not going to be any of them, because he's locked in the Bastille. So Claire got him locked in the Bastille by, by lying and saying that he was the one that raped Mary Hopkins. And none of us are in the least bit surprised, because bitchy Claire has just gotten bitchier, that's all. <laughs> really nothing exciting. Well... Um, you know, because Honey Badger takes the on, Claire Badger takes the on. <laughs> I've watched that video again because I forget all the best lines from. Now watch this. Look, a snake's up in the tree. Honey Badger don't care. Honey Badger don't give a shit. It just takes what it wants. Um, so then Claire and Jamie get into it. And that seems... And into it. And into it. And into it and, and into, into it. it. And and bravo to Sam. I, I have to give Sam a hand here. Because it's Jamie's hating himself some Claire, right? That was a really nice that was a really nice scene. I did go back and read that scene um right before we did this and it's very it's very it's very pretty much, you know, as it goes down in the book. Except for one thing that opened big old Pandora's box for me. Uh oh, here we go. Which is <clears throat> Um, when Jamie's reeling off all of the, like, bad things that Blackjack Randall did, like, I can't believe you're asking me to, um, spare his life when he did this, and he did that, and he did this, and he did that, and he almost drove me to take my own life. Oh, God, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And Pandora's box went like this. <laughs> and because, went like yeah. This. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and, and if you, know, you think about the ram, like not the ramifications, but if you think about what that meant to James Alexander Malcolm Mackenzie Fraser, he was like a a, a devout well, Catholic. I mean, no, my problem, my problem with it is that it's a different Jamie. You know, it's a different Jamie. It's a different Jamie. It's a different Jamie. Jamie in the books. Sorry, people who don't care about in the books, but in the and books, I'm tired of hearing about us. It's about very that. specific. He, Jamie says, Jamie makes a point of saying, and this is in the first book, um, right after it happens, um, something like, somebody, I think somebody makes a suggestion about it or like, you know, is concerned. And he's like, no, you know what? He's taken, he's taken my body, but I will be damned if he gets my soul too. Um, Meaning, you know, I'm not going to kill myself because that's a sin. Yeah, but I think it might just be sort of face value. Like, <clears throat> he's laying there wanting to die. You know what like, I mean? Wanting, like, yes, I get the wanting to die, and I'm on board with that. But, like, and I went back and listened and wrote down. Uh, if they had only said that almost dro drove me to want to die or, or whatever. But uh, I'm going to try to close Pandora's box. I have to go back and read that again because I'm not sure that he never said anything of the... I would think it would be more of, and this is how I feel, I, I, you know, I'm so completely against that, and yet even I was sitting here thinking about it. What, that you thought he didn't want, he, he didn't say that he would never kill himself? Uh, I, I guess it's just not bothering me as much because I just feel like you, it's, it's minute 
to minute with a situation like that when he's laying in that bed devastated and half alive and he, a million things are going to go through your head. So I can't. I don't know. It was just kind of like it. It was just opening old wounds. Watch the watch the, our video for the last episode of the last season. Oh. And you'll see Did not just wounds. spend 15 minutes talking about how hot and amazing and larger than life Black Jack Randall was? I think he opened old wounds. No, this is pretty much this is pretty much the whole like Jamie Fraser would never in a million years um, think about he would absolutely want to die absolutely absolutely just don't like I'm not gonna eat anymore um, I don't want to talk to anybody I don't want to do anything but he would never take his own life sorry he would never do it. never 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 never, never. but okay. maybe that's what he means by take my own life not eat not anything until I die. I don't think that's what he means. How did he you mean like, here, Willie? Give me your gun or whatever, so that I can like kill myself. Blow my brains out. How did you like? Don't touch me. I was, I, I was happy. I was like, good. Tell her off. I did like that. Um. Oh, oh. Hang I on, know hang what, on, hang on, hang on. I got to say something. I seriously, I re that is one blog post <laughs> I remember. Like it was yesterday when this all happened because I was with Jamie a thousand percent when he was like, I need to do this. And Claire's all Frank and you can't give me a year and this and that. And I remember blogging about Tom when he came to me and told me he was going to donate his kidney to his brother. Mm. And he said it in such a way that we were in the car, he turned off the radio, it, it was very quiet, and he was like, I need to talk to you about something. And I knew, uh-oh, this is serious. He said, my brother needs a kidney, and I'm going to give him mine. And he, he was bracing himself that I was going to go, and I went, okay. And he looked at me like, and he said, you're okay with this? And I said, oh, if it was one of my sisters, I'd do the same thing, absolutely. And my point, you girl, you. <laughs> I get a kidney, y'all. <laughs> but... I don't think you want one now. <laughs> but my point is, I knew that he, there could be complications, anything could happen, I could lose my husband, but this was something he needed to do, and I, okay, no problem. And it, that, and I get the Frank stuff, I have always understood where she was coming from, but the bottom line is, you love this man, you say, okay. Even if he's going to die, even if he's going to get arrested, he, you saw him, anybody, no one knows more than Claire, the, the state that Jamie was in. Mm -hmm. If this is what it's going to take, then you hands off and let him do it. And it's perfectly cool. Any of you out there who so totally disagree with me, I totally appreciate that. And I appreciate your opinion. And that's awesome. I don't get, I don't disagree with you. I think it's a perspective thing. Yes. I think that's yes. your perspective. And that's get Claire point. a little more. I don't, I'm, I'm and not a hundred percent. That's my point about anybody out there who's disagreeing with me. No problem. Disagree with me. Don't be like, no, Carol, because of a bit. Why are the enemies being like that? I think people are very respectful. Everybody has their opinion, and I certainly would look at somebody and be like, how could you even think of it? This is my opinion and mine only. I think people are being very respectful you know, um, on oh, yeah. the various the block yes, yes. Yes. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I get it a little more. I mean, clearly she's still, you know, she's chosen Jamie, but the fact that she still has the ring on her finger tells you that she still maybe mourns Frank is not quite the right word, but she still respects Frank and would protect him, would go to the ends of the earth to protect him. So I get it. Um, I get it. I get it. It's a tough, it's a tough nut for her. And honestly, I don't know what I would do. And I think that's where she probably tries to go with it with like, you know, in her eyes, it's a, it's a reasonable request. You know, she's not, as she says, "Are you there to do freaks? Oh, you're there." Sorry. Um, she's not asking him not to do it. She's saying, "Just wait a year. Once a year is up, dude, I I will pull the trigger. I will do it. But just wait a year." Okay. And 
I mean, I, I don't, I don't fault her for that. I mean, I have, I have a little harder time with it just because TV Claire has been a little bitchy and annoying, but uh, you know, I kind of, I kind of got where she was. I got where both of them were going. It's not a black or white thing. They both, I see both sides. And to be honest, I don't know that I really like side with one or the other. Um, if I was in mediation with them, um, I might try to be like, Mediation. <laughs> talking about whipping out a sword or a pistol and killing somebody, and you're talking uh, mediation. Jamie, how is Claire making you feel right now? Oh. <laughs> okay, you know what? I do have to tell you that I had a little procedure this morning that I'm not going to get into details, but it was scheduled for 10:45, and I was having some issues, so I called just to see if I could just maybe show up around 11. And they were like, ooh, she's really packed. Um, this afternoon, she's better. Do you want to come in at like 3.45? And I thought about it for like all of like a microsecond. And I was like, there's no way in hell I can wait. I'm already nervous enough. I can't wait until 3.45. I need to come now. I'll be there. So like that's what I think about when I think of Jamie waiting a year. Like, oh, to me, like time would stop like that a whole year. You want me to keep this in my heart and my soul for a year? See, I think about the logistics more like, okay, you know, it's not like Jamie can just like set his, you know, phone yes, to CGR's I was, phone you know, <laughs> and like, track him, while, you know, use the GPS to track him all the time. I mean, he could disappear. Like right. for all he knew, he would never have seen him again anyway. Right. So, so I get that. And that's, that's, a, that's a tick mark on the like pro side of getting the job done now. Um, but, you know, and what I would tell Claire is, life finds a way, Claire. Like, who says that? I don't remember. Some other time travel movie. Is it, it's Doc, is it um, Doc Brown? <laughs> oh my God, I know. Right? <laughs> I, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't, I don't I know. I think it's Doc but... Brown. Life finds a way. Life uh, finds a way. Hang on, you just said something that made me think of, it was before McFly, so I don't, I don't remember, but, um, oh. So that's it, and we leave them, like, clearly, really oh, fractured. Where he's going to be in a year. Like, okay, so, Blackjack, in about a year's time, you're going to be, I'm going to have to take a boat to wherever you're going to be, and then we're going to get into it again, but. Right. I mean, that's the thing, too. Like, Claire could be like, look, Jamie, I know what's going to happen. Mary's going to marry him. So all we have to do is stay close to Mary, track her movements. Done. done. Then we can have another dinner party. As soon as they have sex. We'll have. She's married. Black she's Jack. pregnant. Boom. Get the job we'll, done. We'll have another dinner party. We'll have Blackjack. We'll just invite Blackjack and Mary. And we'll get them together, and we'll work that sucker like Match.com, and within, like, three weeks, it'll happen. So we're going to push that year date up, like, yeah. seven, eight months. And you know Blackjack's all freaky and stuff, so he's going to get the job done, like, too sweet on Mary. <laughs> <laughs> but aren't they, at this point, oh, well, I'm getting into, I'm getting into gray um, areas. But the, oh, this is the other thing I wanted to say about this whole fight, which is that, like, I think that that's part of the reason that, like, so many of the book readers were like, you know, this Cl Claire and Jamie divided shit really sucks. Because we knew this was coming, y'all. We knew this was coming. But you and know so what I like, noticed is that we never saw, don't you love, kudos to stars for not giving us any blackjack. All, we had all kinds of photos. Oh. Claire and Jamie and the amazing costumes and all this. Never blackjack against that lush green background. Uh, yep. Yeah, Make. that's actually a good question for the non book readers. Like, were you surprised to see him? Mm. Probably not, because I mean, Tobias is in the credits. So unless they thought, and they've already said like no more Frank this season. So probably not that big a surprise. But um, but yeah, no I mean, like, good Claire, Claire and Jamie. Like, you know, I feel like they've been apart more than they've been together this whole season. And now, this is bad. I mean, they, they're like in a real, they're, they're in a real pickle right now. You know? So, whatever. So that's how we leave them at the end of episode five. That's all she wrote. That's, they're divided, and we shall see what happens um, next. So, any last words? What do you think is going to happen next? 
And I would love to hear from the non-book readers what you think is going to happen next. I know. I know. Well, MyOutlanderPurgatory.com. Come and leave your comments. People will, well, I don't know what the scenes will be because we haven't seen them yet for next week. But, um, oh, yeah. It's good, you guys. It's gotten good. It's getting good. So, any so, last words? You, so, do you have a feeling of how much you like this episode or, like, do you I, rank I, it better I, now? I had a very, I loved this episode, but I freaking hated Claire in some of these episodes. I mean, some of these parts, scenes, and some of these scenes, I loved her. It really is very strange, but it's all good. It's all good. It is all good. It is, it is, um, it's frustrating. It is frustrating to watch some of the things that go down, but at the same time, you know, I just, every week, I can't wait to see what's coming next. Yeah, and with such surprises like we had this week, I'll put up, take the good with the bad. I will take, and take it's never, good, none, take the bad. none of it is done poorly. None of it is, I, I say it every week, I'm like a broken record. Amazing writing, amazing acting, amazing costumes, amazing, amazing, amazing. So just because I'm angry at Claire and the way Claire is being portrayed, doesn't mean I don't understand why Claire is being portrayed the way she is. Mm -hmm. It's a different medium. And they, as Diana Gabaldon said the other day when she posted the big scene from the book, they just don't have the time and the space to explain all of it. Mm -hmm. So they have to do it in such a way that everybody's going to be on the same page. And I get that a thousand times. Yep. Yeah, so um, can we just say something really quick like we usually do at the end of these that's non-Outlander related? Would you can like you to say anything? It? Can you, would, can you, I? would you like to say anything about Gilmore Girls? No, because I've just I've been just Googling like like deleted scenes and stuff like that. Talk okay. for 30 seconds. Talk for 30 seconds. Oh, good. Well, I just want to tell you guys because I get a lot of comments about um, Turn and those of you who have started watching Turn and love it. I'm so happy. Yay! Um, and we are on, gosh, how many episodes of Turn have we had? Two or three? I don't know, but I actually tweeted today because, and I'm so not like the, the Twitter person, but I just uh, am starting to get really annoyed that all over the internet I'm seeing Simcoe, I'm seeing Abe. Where's Ben Tomage? Hello? Like, I said something to them today. I love AMC. I watch all AMC. Half the shows I watch are AMC. But I'm getting kind of mad at them that they're not promoting a little bit more. I want to see more Ben Talmadge and less. Um, I love Simcoe. He's like creepy, creepy, creepy and evil and awesome in his creepiness. But hello, like, let's see some more. Let's see everybody else. So I'm um, very interested. If you guys watch Turn, I want to hear your thoughts. Post, post, post. MyOutlanderPurgatory.com and write all of your comments or email me, Carol at MyOutlanderPurgatory.com. Love the email about turn. I want to discuss turn. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. I don't have any non outlander things to talk about, really. Um, Gilmore Girls is great, but like I'm, I'm done with it, and I'm waiting for their revival now. Um, yes. So comment on the blog, comment on YouTube, comment on Facebook, comment on Twitter, comment on Instagram <laughs> if we actually put something up there. I did. I put the uh, I put your the marketing video on there. So. The so what? Oh, oh, Mark, mark me. Mark the, me. The, um, the blog is at last. At last time I checked, it was at like sixty-eight comments. That's great. So everybody's discussing, and you guys, thank you for being patient with us because it's very hard. Like I've said, for number one, let me tell you something. This season's been a lot easier because I love chat. I don't. I love going to chat and discussing with you guys. But during the season, it's hard for Tracy and me. So. Um, Forgive us if we're not jumping in and discussing as much. Um, we've sort of put these out there so that you guys can then start discussing, but we're reading them all. We're reading every comment that comes in. I get an email, and I read the comments. So don't think that we're not seeing the comments. Yes. yes. And, and something superficial is that we're hoping the weather gets nicer so that this is not how we show up next week. Yeah, right. Because it has been so bad. I'm going, oh, boy. Yeah. Oh. Go on. All right, we're at like almost an hour and 40 minutes, so. And we're ending it with Carol's hair. I'm not good. Yeah. Okay, you guys. It's been great, um, and we will talk again next week. Have a great week, and we will see you soon.